Hello. Glad to see you again today. Thought today we'd do a happy little picture, maybe with the sunshine in the winter, and just see what we can develop from there. So let's start out here with just a little touch of permanent red mixed with a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to put the sun in here. So we're going to start right in the center of where we want the sun to be. And this will end up being the aura that's around the sun. And I've already prepared the canvas with magic white, so it's nice and wet. Now we're just going to start with little X patterns here. And we want this to get darker and darker and darker as it works out. Here I'm using a little bit of alizarin crimson and white. But work your brush back and forth. Keep it moving. It's much, much easier to blend these colors when they're like this than in drawing a, a big circle. Now we'll take a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson with a touch of Prussian blue into it. Make sort of a like a lavender color. There we go. And just work it around. Okay, see how that just comes right together? And let's put just a little touch of this pink running right down like so. And we'll just bring all this together. Maybe a little bit in here. Maybe we'll have a little touch of water. Okay, now let's go into a uh, mixture of Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, and a little bit of white to give us a gray effect. And we'll work that also starting from here and working downward so that it gets lighter and lighter as it gets toward the sun. Too many times in paintings we try to avoid the sun. And the sun's a beautiful thing to paint. It's part of nature if you see it just about every day. Sometimes we don't see it every day, but just about. Okay, now we'll take the almighty brush here and we're gonna begin hypnotizing this and do it in little X strokes back and forth. There we go. And we just wanna blend this color out so it's a nice even distribution of color by the time we're finished. Always working with a clean brush from the lightest area outward. It's beginning to come together now. And while the brush is dirty, we'll go ahead and put in a little bit of water. And I'm using the same gray that I used in the sky. And you don't want to cover up this area if you want a nice pink reflection coming across the water. You want to leave this area open. And we'll bring this across. Gently hypnotize it. Okay. We'll clean the almighty brush out here a little bit. Now you can work this as many times as you want, but the big thing is to always start with a clean brush and work outward. Okay, there we go. So you just have a nice gradual blending of color. We'll hypnotize it a little. Now we'll take a one inch brush, fill it full of titanium white. And we're going straight into the canvas and we're gonna push very hard, just push this value right into the canvas, like so. And if you wanna give some little indications of sunlight, you can just gently put a few of these in, just here and there. Okay. Now we'll take out all the excess loose paint. The value remains in the canvas. Now we can hypnotize that. And we don't want these to be bright and distinct. They'll still show, even though you hypnotize them over and over and over. Okay. Okay, now if you got that done, we can move right along here. We'll take a little bit of the uh, alizarin crimson, a little blue, mix it together here. And we're just going to make an indication of some nice little hills and mountains way back here in the background. There we go. 
just lay them on with a knife. We're using very, very little paint. Scrape off all the excess. And we'll just let it run right on out. Okay, with a big brush, we'll pull that down. And with a large brush like this, you can make all of your highlights and shadows in the mountain just by using brush strokes. And we're not going to worry about highlighting this with white like we normally do. We just want sort of a silhouette back here. Okay. Now we'll take a little bit of the grayish color, maybe just a touch more brown. And we're going to put in some little foothills that are way back here. Just take the big brush and tap the canvas. There we go. And we'll take a little bit of that same color and pull downward. This will make our reflections. And I'm going to lift slightly upward, just to give it the appearance of little trees, way back in the distance, far, far away. Okay. Okay, now we'll just hypnotize this just a little bit to give it a watery effect. Now a little bit of magic white, a little bit of magic white. And to it I'm going to add just a little bit of pink. That's a little too much, so we'll just tone it down. There we go. That's better. And we'll cut us a little water line back here. We don't want this to be bright and distinct. We just want a gentle little water line to, to break up these two dark areas. And act just like you're trying to cut right through the canvas. Go straight into the canvas. And already you have the impression of a beautiful sun, little hills in the background, foothills in the foreground. Now let's come forward and, and see what we can make. I think we'll take a little alizarin crimson and a touch of sap green mixed together. Make a very warm brown color here. And we'll use the almighty fan brush. And let's come down and let's just have some little grassy areas right along in here. There we go. Now when you're doing this at home, if you find that you end up with a bunch of smiley faces because the fan brush is curved, use the corner of the brush. Just use the corner. Don't want to end up with a picture full of smiley faces all at one time. It's supposed to make you happy, but we don't want to show all the smiley faces. Okay. Now we'll take some titanium white and begin laying in a little snow here. And the angle that you lay this in is very important. We want this to show a little hill coming down, a little gradual decline. So we're going to pull it in that direction. And let your paint break. So you have all these open spots. And the color we put here ends up being your shadows. OK. Then we can work the little grassy areas right into that. And you have those travel with the lay of the land also. Let them, let them sort of flow down like that. Okay. Let's clean off a little spot to work here. And we'll make some almighty trees. I'm going to take some Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, little phthalo green, and a little touch of alizarin crimson. 
You want a very dark color, it should look black. <clears throat> and let's see here, we're going to load the brush full of paint. And let's put a happy little tree. Let's see, let's see. Right here. And we sort of just touch the canvas to give us a guide. And then we're going to push upward. Make a little different kind of tree today. Just push. Okay, let's give him a little friend right here. And we push. Just push those limbs right out of the brush. And maybe we'll put some nice little snow-covered bushes in here, too. So we'll just lay those in. You need the dark in order to show the light, so... Put your dark color in so the light will show up when we put it on. Okay, now we'll just... cut through the paint and give some little trunk indications here and there. Now we'll take a little bit of magic white, and we'll mix that with firm white and a little touch of the blue that we use to make the tree. And we'll highlight this tree. And we see our light source, so we just push. We want this side of the tree to be a little bit brighter. There we go. A little bit for over here. Okay, now let's highlight some of these bushes. I'm going to take a little bit of magic white with a firm white. A little touch of permanent red, just so it sets off a little bit better. Okay, now we'll push off some nice little snow-covered bushes. It's a very gentle touch, just enough to get the paint to come off the brush. Okay, here's a nice bush. We'll put some snow on him. When you're doing this, try to do one bush at a time and have him finish before you go to another one. Otherwise, they'll just sort of run together and, and you'll lose track of them. Okay, then we can put a few little stems here and there. All we're doing is cutting right through the paint. Okay. Now, let's have some snow coming this way. We'll change these angles a little bit so that we have different planes in this picture. And maybe we'll bring it down just a little more. And we'll have a little angle coming right down like that. There. Okay, seems like I remember there was an old farmer that used to live here, and he, he built a barn right here. So let's put a nice barn here. And it's better to sort of scrape it out to get all the loose paint off so the other paint will stick. It's also a nice way to lay it out. It'll give you an idea of your perspective and what you're doing. Just basic shape. Okay, so we'll take a little Van Dyke Brown, and let's lay this eave here in, like so. There. And we'll put some snow on the roof. Just come down and let it drop. We want to give it the indication that it's sort of one of these roofs that come over and drop. Firm that back edge up, over, down, over, down. These strokes are very important to make it look like the roof has that angle in it. Okay. I'm going to put 
put some wood in here, just like so. There we go. And some over here. Gotta have a side on the barn. Don't want the cows to get out. Okay. Now, let's put a little bit of snow on the other side of the roof over here. And we can firm this up. And maybe a little bit right along through here. A little more Van Dyke Brown and we can lay some shadows in there. There. Okay, tell you what. Let's, uh, let's give him a little shed out here. Farmer always needs more room, so we'll put him a little shed. See how easy that is? Just let it happen. Okay. And we need a little place for him to put the hay up here. And you can create any kind of barn you want here. It's just a matter of working with a knife, letting it happen, and having something inside that you want to put on canvas. Okay, let's uh, let's put a nice bush here and push him back into the bushes. Maybe this old farmer, maybe he took up drinking a little bit too much. You know, we all have a problem sometimes. And the woods are sort of creeping up and fixing to eat up his barn. Okay, we'll take a little more of the titanium and magic mixed together. And we'll put some highlights on these bushes. There we go. Okay. And here and there we have some more of the little weeds that are growing around. Just use the corner of the fan brush to make friends with it. And there's some growing right along the edge of this little hill. Okay. Now then, let's put an almighty tree in here. Let's come right along in here. Big tree. He just goes right on off the canvas. There we go. Now yeah, we're getting some size to it. Now we can take and put some highlights on him. A little bit of the magic, a little titanium, and then we're going to put some blue on there. I want this to look cold. This picture should have both warmth and coldness in it, because we have the, the sun with all the warm colors and coming right through here. So let's do this. We'll just put some nice little highlights here. Just let the light bounce through there and play. Okay. Now we can continue with our snow here a little more. And let's bring this one, have a different plane coming down through here. Just let it come right through. Okay.
just let that knife run right down in the angle that you want to, to show that your land is flowing. And try to let the paint break. Okay. Let's take, and maybe, maybe we have a few more little bushes in here that are growing down the hill. And we just push these in. Like so. Okay, a little more of the magic. Remember, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint, so you need to thin your paint just a little bit. Okay, maybe just a little touch more. And we'll put a nice little bush standing right here. Another one right along here. There we go. Just sort of let your imagination wander around wherever you think there might be a little bush or tree. Put it in. This is your world. Okay, maybe we'll take, put in some little trunks here of a little tree that just about has nothing on it. Just the trunk left. Old man Winter's taken all of his leaves away. You know, in Alaska, we have, in the winter, ice fog, which settles on every little branch, everything. Oh, it's so beautiful. It just looks so pretty. It's almost like something out of a fairy tale book. This is probably one of the reasons I paint so many winter pictures. Because in Alaska, we see a lot of winter. So, it's a good way to learn how to use the equipment. And we're trying to give you ideas here, trying to teach you a technique and how to use it. There. And maybe, maybe another little thing coming up through here. Okay. Now maybe this old farmer, before he left the farm, maybe he had a fence that went right along here and to keep the cow in. And make up these little stories as you paint. It really helps give you ideas. It makes your imagination work. And imagination is the key to painting. What to paint is much, much harder than how to paint it. And we've showed you how to paint it. Now the imagination comes from you. And maybe we can see the top of one more little post right there. Okay, we'll take a little bit of color, a little white, and we'll put a little highlight on these. Just like so. And a little snow laying on the top. And let's have a wire running along these fence posts. It just comes right on down. Like so. And all we've done here is just literally scratch through the paint. Okay. And you nearly always have a few little bushes that grow around the post. When you're cutting the the grass, you can't get up next to the post to cut it, so you usually always have some around here. And maybe with just a touch of very, very light blue, very light, we can just put some little indications of shadows back here. Just a little bit. Okay, now let's put some highlights on the little bushes. There we go. And look at there. Just make those sparkle in the sun. Okay. And here and there, a few more little weeds sticking through the snow. And you can sort of fix it up now. And, but don't piddle it to death. Don't keep playing with it. One of the hardest things is, when do I stop? Do I go a little bit farther? 
and you can sit and look at a picture long enough that you're going to find something else you want to do, and you're going to piddle it and piddle it, and pretty soon, all you're going to have is a happy mess. So learn when to stop. Just a few little sticks here and there. And let's put just a little touch of highlight on this. A little happy sunlight shining through there. There we go. See what you can do in just a matter of a few minutes? And we knew you could do it. Okay. And when you do this at home, you have unlimited time, and you can take and put a lot more detail into it. You can work out a lot of things. Here we're just trying to, to give you an idea in 30 minutes, so I think I'll just uh, sign this. We'll use a thin oil with a little bit of color on it till we get it just about the consistency of water. Very, very thin. And with that, then, you can just take and write your name. Takes as long to write your name as it does to paint the picture nearly. Okay. Maybe a little more paint right there. And we advise that you date your painting so in years to come, as you look at them, or as your grandchildren look at them, you can tell what year this was painted in. And it brings back a lot of happy memories. I'm going to take just a little more of the oil and put with a little bit of brown. And maybe we'll put it there, see? Because this is a thin, slick paint. You can go right over the other paint without messing it up. Add in a few little sticks. There we go. Just moving right on along. Okay. Now see, I told you not to piddle it, and I'm sitting here, and I'm, I'm starting to piddle it to death. So I think we'll just lay the brush down and call that one finished. And we hope you have enjoyed the almighty sun, the barn, the beautiful painting we've done today. And you can do it too. Until we meet again, happy painting.